Yeah, sometimes I see that the appeal for civil dialogue today there is a new phenomenon is uh, converging. For example, we had last year uh, in preparation for the COP26 uh, and uh, we had uh, scientists, religious leaders, political leaders in the Vatican organized by uh, three embassies. So most of the appeals today, we also find that uh, religious dimension not completely excluded. And to answer to your question, what is distinct about Pope Francis' idea of culture of encounter? So we have to go to the definition what he gives with regard to the culture of what he means uh, by culture of uh, encounter. And we have already uh, heard this, uh, I suppose, number 216 in Fratelli Tutti. <clears throat> he says, to speak of a culture of encounter means that we as a people should be passionate about meeting others, seeking points of contact, building bridges, planning a project that includes everyone. So here Pope Francis defines what he means by culture of encounter. First, he, he himself is passionate about meeting the others. And especially when we look at his apostolic visits and he meets Catholics, he meets other uh, Christians, he meets uh, other religious leaders, he meets political and diplomats. So he meets also those who are excluded from the society. He makes it a point to visit orphanage or refugee camps. And then he's passionate about it. There is passion and it comes from his own uh, convictions. And that is one of the distinctive characteristics, the passion for meeting others. And the second, here he walks the talk. Yeah. Then in, this, um, in these meetings, he seeks point of contact, not what divides people, what unites people. So you meet the people, and you don't exclude anyone, you try to include as many groups, as many cultures, as many religions, as many political uh, parties, etc. And then you uh, find out what can bring us together. So it can be human fraternity, peace, reconciliation, ecology, um, core values of all religions. Then he speaks of building bridges. And he often underlines also importance of building bridges, not walls. We have to demolish walls, cultural walls that we have constructed. And then we have to rebuild the uh, new bridges where people can freely uh, cross cultures. And then he says, this becomes an aspiration and a lifestyle of all. And the subject of uh, subject is people, not simply one part. So here also inclusive approach. He doesn't exclude anyone. And I think uh, this is what culture of encounter means, which leads to a, a new society. We are uh, imitating Francis of Assisi, who crossed borders to encounter uh, uh, Muslim leaders, like likewise, Pope Francis is uh, passionate about it, and he seeks points of contact, build uh, bridges, and then he does not uh, exclude anyone. So this is what 
uh, uh, make it uh, distinct uh, when you compare to uh, some political leaders uh, because they talk but they don't implement what they talk whereas Francis he walks the talk for me personally what matters also my background as I mentioned, I come from Sri Lanka. I was born into a family where my mother was a Buddhist before uh, marriage. And all my relatives from my mother's side, uh, they were uh, Buddhist. And uh, then my ne next door neighbors uh, have been no, uh, Muslims. So we have the third generation. And then I happened to go to schools and all. Uh, we had Buddhist friends, we had Muslims, um, a few Hindus as well. So uh, that was uh, my background and that helped me to uh, form my attitudes, my world vision, how I look at others. So uh, what I mean, what does it mean? to me cultural encounter is where people live in harmonious relationships with friendships uh, rooted in your own identity but at the same time respecting the diversity so that, that's what uh, uh, the, the, i mean culture of uh, encounter I, uh, what comes to my mind is particular experience uh, when I was in Sri Lanka, there was a debate on conversion mm -hmm. and uh, we call it a conversion debate and Buddhists accuse Christians of forced conversion and they call it unethical conversion. So there was a, a debate in the mass media uh, about this particular issue and then also uh, that divided Christians because uh, uh, the main Catholic Church and the mainline churches they pointed finger at uh, ev some evangelical and Pentecostal groups mm -hmm. so it became uh, uh, interreligious issue it became an uh, ecumenical issue it also became a political issue because uh, government was planning to introduce uh, anti-conversion bills mm -hmm. to curb uh, so-called uh, forced conversion. And then uh, uh, I was in the parish and then uh, it affected uh, relationships. Mm -hmm. It created suspicions. And so uh, I, uh, we followed uh, the th three steps. First, encounter. Second, being presence. Third, being engaged, encounter. So uh, a group of priests, including myself, under the instruction of the bishop, we visited different Buddhist monks in our parishes. And then we explain, explain to them uh, that we are not uh, part of uh, this conversion campaign. And then uh, uh, earlier, uh, it was difficult to relate to them. And then frequent uh, visits uh, help us to uh, iron out the differences. And they came to know uh, who we are and who are responsible for uh, some uh, so-called unethical care. We also visited uh, 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 government institutions uh, and also became friendly with uh, some uh, uh, political leaders. Uh, and then at the end, uh, we were able to bring, to bring together all parties and have a dialogue, healthy dialogue, and that help us to overcome uh, uh, prejudices. This happened at a local level, not at 
national level. But at the national level, it helped us to uh, foster culture of encounter. And to that, uh, we had to overcome the uh, obstacles and uh, hindrances. And <clears throat> we overcame the hindrances, encountering the others, and also entering into a healthy, uh, fruitful uh, dialogue, which paved us uh, the way for uh, uh, for uh, <clears throat> overcoming prejudices and for a, it contributed um, at least uh, in our area for a peaceful uh, healthy uh, relationships I will deal with the, the, the area that I am involved with interreligious, and <clears throat> intercultural uh, dialogue. Um, yes, uh, I was in Sri Lanka for about a month and uh, I went uh, uh, with the idea of uh, uh, what should I speak when I uh, come to this forum. So that was behind my mind when I look at the Sri Lankan society. You know, it is a society uh, with many wounds, uh, ethnic conflict between Tamils and Sinhalese, and then uh, Easter bomb attack, and that uh, also wounded uh, Christians, and also that also affected uh, uh, Muslims, um, and also uh, a conversion issue. So it is a society where you have many wounds. Mm -hmm. But uh, I want to um, underline that we have, I always say, dominant culture. And then we have uh, uh, other cultures. Mm -hmm. And also we have dominant stories. We have stories, narratives, uh, from the uh, grassroots level, how people really lived. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there is also a contradiction. And often in the media, we hear even in Sri Lanka, even in other countries, conflicts, polarization among religions, among cultures. And uh, I want to contradict this because I know uh, at the grassroots level, there exists different narratives. So for example, I can, uh, we don't have much time, I can give you a few examples. One is my next door neighbors are Muslims and they have two uh, girls who are, they are working in hospital. One is a doctor and the other one is a nurse. And then they shared with me how in the hospital, all the staff members irrespective of their religions and cultures, they celebrated Christmas. And then each uh, department, they had to decorate. So Christmas tree and all. And then uh, they had the secret uh, Santa. And then they have the Christmas uh, tree and gifts. And this is culture of encounter, I see. And here, different followers of different religions, different cultures. And uh, when it comes to a celebration of Christians, they respect and also they, um, they uh, celebrate it with others. Mm -hmm. And then we can also see how these gestures, these actions uh, uh, bring harmony among themselves and how it contributes to the wider society. And uh, then I visited the Caritas uh, uh, Center in Colombo. And then there I, I listened to them. I, with this intention, I went, tell me some narratives about how you promote. I have a, a webinar or meeting on culture of encounter. And then they, asked, they showed the art uh, how the painting of children on this uh, theme, harmony, culture of encounter, ecology, 
and then uh, they say a lot and then they have other initiatives on reconciliation because we try to still uh, recover from uh, uh, ethnic stripe that uh, destroyed uh, not only a material side but also destroyed uh, human lives and human relationships there are initiatives and uh, so what i want to underline here is uh, we have a dominant narrative or narratives we have other narratives what is important is to bring to the surface i did not share here with you i spoke to the commission for interreligious dialogue in sri lanka the members also shared their different experiences how they promote interreligious dialogue their visits to the religious uh, places and their conferences they don't come to the uh, national uh, level and but these activities are taking place and they directly uh, contribute uh, to uh, foster a culture of encounter so what i want is uh, here to underline that we must bring these narratives to the surface and then that uh, that is uh, uh, that help us uh, uh, to learn from the others there is also educational aspect for it and also it help us uh, narratives in asia part of and parcel of uh, religious uh, religions most of the religious doctrines are narrated by, through stories whether it is buddhism or hinduism jesus himself uh, shared his uh, doctrines to narratives so we need the theories we need the intellectual big discussions but at the same time these simple stories can open uh, hearts and minds of people and help uh, all of us to uh, live in harmony and to foster culture of encounter so that's what i just want to share with you uh, from my personal experiences i lived uh, these days and thanks also to you because of this uh, project help me to uh, look at my own culture my own society with different eyes